guys it's and it's gone and today i will be doing my 2021 mlb mock draft for the first 29 picks as the astros lost theirs in the 2017 cheating scandal unlike the previous drafts in which there's a clear-cut number one pick in adley rutschman or spencer torkelson the 2021 mlb draft is a lot different in that it has about five prospects that could all go number one however what the draft lacks in genuine star power it makes up with depth a lot of prospects seem to have their stock rise after the College World Series and the first ever MLB Combine, so I will be also putting that into account. Now, this is not a best prospect rankings, it's just who I think will go there and why. As for MLB comps, these picks are nowhere near the level of these players today, but if they reach their ceilings, then the comp is what to expect from that player. Thank you guys for watching, remember if you guys enjoy, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below new video ideas. I'm going to do a few more about the trade deadline, and anyways, let's get on to the video. The Pittsburgh Pirates hold the number one pick and are in desperate need of star power besides the upside of Kiber and Hayes, so the Pirates GM select the prospect with the highest upside in my opinion and catcher Henry Davis from Louisville. Henry Davis has shown this season in college that he has great control of the strike zone and can make loud contact consistently. He's athletic enough at catcher to also play third base, first base, right field, or left field if catching doesn't work out, or if they have another generational catcher on their roster already. The latter seems more likely because Henry Davis has way above average arm strength and should be able to stay at catching. Overall, this is a solid pick with the upside of getting the next JT Real Muto. The Texas Rangers have made it clear that if Jordan Lawyer, a shortstop from Jesuit Prep High School, does not get taken by the Pirates at 1, that they would take him at 2. So, I will also put Jordan Lawyer at 2, and I do not believe that this pick is a reach at all. Jordan Lawyer consider draws comparisons to fellow number 2 overall pick Bobby Wood Jr., that he's a great fielder at shortstop, has quick bat speed from the right-hand side, and has above-average athleticism on the base paths and on the field. However, Many scouts believe that Jordan Lawyer is more polished than Bobby Wood Jr. at this stage and thus has a higher floor. The Rangers, if all goes right, should have the next generational shortstop to the likes of Trevor Story, who can impact the game in both ways with his bat and with gold glove defense at shortstop. The Detroit Tigers are known for having close connections with the best prospect left on the board in Marcio Meyer, and that works out perfectly, so they draft a shortstop out of East Lake High School in California. Unlike Lawyer, Meyer is a left-handed hitter and should have some power to tap into as he develops more into his frame. I see him having a higher upside than Lawyer due to his swing and power, but a lower floor because he doesn't have the athleticism to fall back on if all else fails. Even so, you could always move into third base or second base if shortstop doesn't work out. His smooth swing from the left-hand side reminds me of Corey Seager, and he should be a, sharding, a starting shortstop on the Tigers for decades to come if he develops properly. Jack Leiter has some extreme leverage in that he can always return to Vanderbilt for a third season, and a team would lose the draft signing bonus money entirely and a top three pick. That is one of the main reasons why Jack Leiter isn't going to go in the top three picks because they don't want to waste it. However, Jack Leiter just fits too well with the Red Sox in that he should have a quick ride through the minors and make it to the majors when the Red Sox are truly returning to contention. Jack Leiter will soon overtake Chris Sale as the ace of the Red Sox rotation in a few years if he signs with them. It's a, it is a huge risk to draft him. You're at four and he, he's probably going to have to ask for above overslot value. However, if he does sign, they have a steal. Jack Leiter reminds some scouts of Sonny Gray a former Vanderbilt pitcher, and his pitch repertoire except Jack Leiter is more polished as a starter at the current time. The Baltimore Orioles have a history of drafting players and signing them for below average slot value in the last few years, and they continue that trend by drafting Jackson Job, who they should be able to sign for less than fellow pitcher Kumar Rocker and save some slot money for later picks. Job has a great fastball and changeup, which he can repeat with his consistent motion, but his real pitch is his wipeout slider, which sits in the low 80s and has elite rotations with over 3,000 rotations per minute. He reminds scouts of fellow Orioles draftee Dylan Bundy, 
Furthermore, the Orioles have many prospects on their horizon. However, many of them are positional players like Adley Rushman and Yenziel Diaz. Jackson Job and starting pitching prospect Grayson Rodriguez should be at the top of the Orioles rotation for a decade to come. The Diamondbacks in their last few drafts have shown a liking for undersized contact hitters in the early rounds of the draft, so they continue that by drafting shortstop Khalil Watson out of Wake Forest in North Carolina. Khalil Watson is an all-around great player with a compact swing that also generates easy power. During his senior year of high school, he has shown above average athleticism on the base paths and also on the field, so he should be able to stick at shortstop but can move to second base or third base if need be. His five-tool player potential from the left-hand side has my player comp being Xander Bogarts. The Royals are most likely going to take either Rocker or Watson, depending on who the Diamondbacks draft. So I have them getting Kumar Rocker at 7. Kumar, the son of former NFL defensive lineman Tracy Rocker, is a big guy standing at 6 foot 5 and 245 pounds. Rocker has an above average fastball, curveball, and slider, which all have above average spin rates and his four seam velocity sits at around 93 to 96. However, his control is a spot on his otherwise perfect pitch repertoire of his pitches and can allow him to get wild or when his lossy is down to get hit around often. This has led to some blow up starts at Vanderbilt and has caused him to fall to seven. If he can get his control under wraps, his ceiling is the next Justin Verlander. The Rockies would love to select a pitcher here at 8, but none of the pitchers left on the top board really go well in course field. So they take the best player available in power hitting shortstop Brady House from Winder Barrow High School. He's athletic enough to stay at shortstop in the minor leagues, but he will most likely move to third base as the game gets quicker in the majors. He's a strong guy and has excellent power and bat speed. However, he often sells out for home runs, making his swing and miss game very high. However, it should play very well in course field and in today's MLB. If his swing and miss game goes down, the Rockies could have themselves the next generational third baseman since Nolan Arenado. Also, that's also ironically my player comp for him as well. The Angels need pitching as they already have three generational hitters in Trout, Rendon, and Otani. So they draft the best pitcher available in right-handed pitcher Ty Madden out of Texas. Madden is a bigger dude at 6 foot 3 and 215 pounds and uses that strength to pitch a 93 to 96 mile an hour fastball with late sink and movement. His best two secondary pitches are a slider and changeup. However, he also has a curveball which he is developing. He has above average control on all these pitches and should prevent big innings more than Kumar. With his pitch repertoire, he reminds scouts of fellow top pick Zach Greinke and should be a deadly one-two punch for Shohei Otani in the upcoming years. It is at this point which I believe that the upper tier of talent is all gone and the Mets are unfortunate enough to not be able to choose from any of that talent. They have a choice between two left-handed outfield prospects in Colton Kowser and Sal Frederick. In my mock draft, I have the Mets selecting Colton Kowser due to his compact swing and bigger frame. While he's currently a center fielder, he will most likely move to right or left field due to his below average arm and just average speed. With a compact swing from the left-handed side, he draws comps to fellow Met Brandon Nimmo. The Washington Nationals are tied to many pitchers, and while they would love to select Rocker or Joe, there is no way that any of them fall to 11. So this is like the best pitcher left in right-handed pitcher Sam Bachman. Bachman has an electric fastball which is in the high 90s usually but has a hit a high of 101. He also has two great secondary pitchers in a slider and changeup, which each with above average velocity for their pitch. However, there is a good chance he could become a reliever due to his short arm action and lower arm slot, which are hard to change. Due to this, my major league comp for him is Mets reliever and closer Edwin Diaz due to their high velocity pitches and electric secondary pitches.
The Mariners have been connected to many college hitters in their latest mock drafts, and while the top college bat is South Frederick, I have them going with shortstop Matt McClain because their outfield situation long term is set with Kyle Lewis, Jared Kelenic, and Julio Rodriguez. Matt McClain has already been drafted in the first round after going 25th overall to the Diamondbacks in 2018, but they failed to sign him. Matt has had his struggles in UCLA early, but has turned it around in the last few years to show himself as a great fielder who makes hard contact from the right-hand side. My easy comp for him is Tim Anderson due to their hard contact and electric play style. The Phillies would love to select Madden here, but because he's already gone, they go with their second priority in college bat and select the speedy Sal Frederick. Due to his speed, he's likely able to stay in center field long term and provide great to excellent defense. While he won't hit for power, he has good bat to ball skills and possibly provide gap to gap power, which should play well with his 70 grade speed. Sal Frederick, from the left hand side, reminds me of a younger Endier Enciarte due to their great speed, gap-to-gap -gap power, and gold glove defense in center field. He should play well in the Philadelphia Phillies large outfield. The San Francisco Giants have been known to love Benny Montgomery and he's still on the board so they select him with the 14th overall pick. At only 18, Benny is young for a top 15 pick and still has a lot of development left to go as scouts see many holes in his swing which lead to average to below average at bats. Nevertheless, he was able to perform well against the best competition in the state of Pennsylvania. However, his bat alone is not worth a top draft pick. His other tools are outstanding and he even has 70 grade speed. Scouts compare him to a younger Jason Worth. The Brewers, like many teams around them, are focused on getting the best of the second tier of college hitters and would love to have selected Montgomery, Frederick, or Kowser here, but all of them have been taken off the board. So, they move in a different direction and select high school catcher Harry Ford. He is most likely going to stay behind the plate even with his footwork issues, which could be polished. He has a great speed even if he was not a catcher and is athletic enough to play in the outfield if needed. He has some of the best, best bat speed in his high school class and should get better and better as he moves through the Brewers system. He reminds scouts of Craig Biggio, or more recently, San Francisco prospect catcher Joey Bart, who was also drafted in the first round. The Marlins' goal is to just grab the most talented prospect available, regardless of who they are, so they select the best player left on the board in catcher Joe Mack. His brother, Charles, was already drafted by the Twins in the sixth round. Joe Mack has the ability to impact the game from both sides of the plate. Joe's upside is an above average hitter even for a catcher and while he isn't a power hitter, he's good at finding the gaps. Defensively, he has a quick pop time and great catching awareness. While he is a slower player, he's good for a catcher and shouldn't clog the bases. I see his player comp being Carlos Santana even though Joe's not a switch hitter. In a perfect world, the Reds would love to take a player like McLean. To fall for them at 17 but if all else fails they want to take a solid pitching prospect so they select the best pitching prospect available and left-handed pitcher jordan wicks while he doesn't have one pitch that is completely dominating like many others in his draft class he has a great combination of pitches which are all above average his fastball curveball slider and changeup all have repeated deliveries and he pounds his own very well his best weapon is his changeup which sits in the low 80s and has a lot of late drop my player comp is Hyung Jin Ryu due to their good command of all of their pitches from the left-handed side. With the 18th pick, the St. Louis Cardinals get a steal and right-handed pitcher Gunnar Hogland, who would have been a top 10 pick if it wasn't for his elbow giving out this year. However, the St. Louis Cardinals have an excellent farm system development team and they should be able to get Gunnar better therapy and make sure that these injury issues don't happen anymore. Gunner has a fastball which hits in the 92 to 95 range and a very tight slider which is his main secondary pitch. However, he also has a curveball and changeup which is developing well, especially the curveball. He also has above average command of all four of his pitches. Due to this, I, have a, I compare a ceiling to fellow St. Louis Cardinals pitcher Jack Flaherty. 
With the 19th pick, the Blue Jays select Bubba Chandler, who possibly has the highest upside in the entire draft. As a right-handed pitcher and shortstop in high school, Bubba could be the next generational two-way two player for the Blue Jays. He has a fastball which is in the low 90s, an average to below average secondary pitches, and a curveball, slider, and changeup. He has decent command of all through all of these pitches, which he uses in a repeatable pitching motion. As we're hitting, he's likely going to be an average to below average hitter and fielder in the infield, especially when he plays shortstop or second base. As a pitcher, his ceiling is Shane Beaver, and as a hitter, his ceiling is Jose Iglesias because he has an excellent arm like Jose Iglesias at shortstop. Most of the names linked with the New York Yankees organization are pitchers, so I have them selecting the best player available, who is a pitcher and high schooler Andrew Painter. Painter has very high upside due to his 6 foot 6 frame and his athleticism. However, he also has a legitimate 4 pitch mix with a great fastball and 3 decent secondary pitches in a curveball, slider, and changeup. He has decent control of all these pitches which should translate well in the majors. However, he is still incredibly raw at 18 and the real job is going to be on the Yankees development squad to help him develop his raw talent. The ceiling is the moon for Painter, and if all works out, the Yankees could have the next Walker Buehler on their squad. The Cubs honestly don't know who they're drafting, so I just have them getting the best player left on the board and left-handed pitcher Anthony Solamento. Anthony has three decent pitches in a fastball, curveball, and changeup and he throws with a repeatable delivery and deceptive delivery, which can often trick hitters and lead to many strikeouts. However, he needs to improve his command in order to make the majors and improve the depth and spin rate on his secondary pitches, which are both currently below average. Many scouts compared him to San Diego Padres top prospect Mackenzie Gore and the fact that they both have a high leg kick and their deliveries. However, a current major league comparison would be Madison Bumgarner due to their low 90s velocity on their fastball and cutter and their deceptive deliveries from the left-handed side. The Chicago White Sox are looking for some good high school bats, so they take the best one available in Joshua Baez, an outfielder from Dexter Southfield, Massachusetts. No, he's not related to Javier Baez. He's likely going to be a corner outfielder in the majors as he doesn't have the best speed but can still run the base paths really well. Baez has quick enough bat speed to not have a lot of strikeouts, however, in his search for power, he often strikes out, searching for that one pitch to hit 600 feet. However, if Chicago's development team can get him to still tap into his power without him striking out a lot, they might have the next generational hitter on their hands. As for now, think of him as a Joey Gallo except he hits right-handed. The Cleveland Indians like prep players and are also, but are also in a long-term need of generational hitters, so they select the best one available in right-handed pitcher Ryan Cusick out of Wake Forest. Ryan's main pitch is his fastball which sits in the 97 range but can hit 102 at most. His delivery should be able to stay as a starting pitcher even with his high velocity. However, he needs to develop one of his secondary pitches in his slider, curveball, or changeup into a legitimate secondary pitch that could be used repeatedly in the majors. He also needs to improve his command to prevent big innings. My player comp if all goes well is Noah Syndergaard due to their high velocity and pretty nasty secondary pitches. A name keeps getting associated with the Atlanta Braves and that is right-handed pitcher Will Bednar. Will has a great fastball which sits in the 93-95 to 95 range and it tops out at 97 with a very tight slider with high spin rate. He also has a a a average to above average pitches in a curveball and changeup depending on if he's feeling it that game. Will impressed this year at Mississippi State due to his ability to pound the zone and his ability to limit big innings. Will should have a fast track through the majors and could reach the Braves major league team within 2-3 to three years. My major league comp for him is also Shane Beaver at his best. The Oakland Athletics love to draft athletic outfielders in the early rounds, so they select Will Taylor out of Dutch Fork, South Carolina, who played as a center fielder and quarterback and scored 32 touchdowns with his football team. So, naturally, he has a great arm and should be able to stay at center field, but could move to any corner outfield position. As far as his bat, he's a light hitting outfielder who could generate some power in the majors if he grows more into his 6 foot frame. 
Will Taylor is a project that will need a lot of work in Oakland's development team if they wish to truly make him into a stud. As for now, I compare him to center fielder on the Brewers, Lorenzo Cain, due to them both having a strong arm and good fielding in center field. With the 26th pick, the Minnesota Twins select outfielder Judd Fabian out of Florida. Judd was a highly rated prospect coming out of high school, but decided to go to college, and in the end, that was the right decision. While Judd did have some strikeout issues in the past, he has drastically improved in his years at college and his strikeout rate has dipped. While Fabian doesn't have the most elite of speed, he is athletic enough to do damage on the base paths and should stay in a corner outfield position. Scouts say that Judd Fabian reminds them of a younger Mookie Betts with their athleticism and quick bat speed from the right hand side. The San Diego Padres have been associated with many prep hitters and they hope that either Joshua Baez or Will Taylor falls to them. However, with both of them off the board, they select the best prep hitter left in shortstop Peyton Stovall. While he played shortstop in high school, he has a pretty unathletic lower body and will most likely move to second base. But if there's one thing Payne Stovall can do, is it's hit. He has a pretty left-handed swing that makes hard contact consistently. However, that sweet swing only translates to average to below average power. My comparison is current Padres second baseman Jake Cronenworth due to their ability to simply rake from the left-handed side. The Tampa Bay Rays have been associated with many electric pitchers in the first round of the last few drafts, such as Brett Honeywell, so they draft another great pitcher with amazing stuff in Chase Petty. There is no question about the talent of his stuff. He has a fastball which sits in the upper 90s and has a lot of late sync. He also has a decent slider and average to above average changeup. However, there are some concerns that he's going to end up as a reliever due to the fact that he's an undersized pitcher. He has a lower 3 fourths arm slot which could lead to arm fatigue, and he has a lack of pitches which he can mix up in full hitters in the major leagues. Due to reliever risk, I compare him to current relief pitcher Jordan Hicks because of their very high velocity sinkers and not that good of secondary pitchers. Lastly, the Dodgers get mentioned with a slew of hitters such as Stovall, Sweeney, Del Casio, Nelson, and Morissetti, so they select the best one available in Isaac Parecho who ironically draws comparisons to fellow Dodgers late round draftee, Brady House. However, some differences is that Perezzo is a left-handed hitter and is more athletic than House. Perezzo is your average third baseman in that he is extremely strong and will give you consistent power from the left-handed side. However, like Baez before him, he often sells out for home runs and that leads to many strikeouts. He should be fine in today's MLB though. I think his upside is a just a left-handed hitter, Eugenio Suarez. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe. This video literally took days to make, so any subscriptions or likes based on this video is greatly appreciated. Comment down below new video ideas. I'm going to do some about the draft, and see you guys next time. Bye.